G'day folks. Time for a bit of an update on the fish farm or aquaculture system behind me here. Uh, it's been pretty much well depopulated a fair bit. Uh, April was the last clip I did and I think I showed moving a load of fish over into the aquaponic system um, just to repopulate it after I had a bit of an accident over there and lost a whole heap of fish. Um, probably about a month and a half ago though I did make a bit of a change to the system. I took out uh, all the fish that were in the tank to the right of me over there. Um, I took them all out kept seven aside, um, dispatched them and we kept them to eat and put the balance into this tank behind me here. So there ended up being 19 fish in there. The six large ones, average weight all up, worked out to be around about 480 grams or roughly about a pound in weight. So yeah, I was really stoked with that. Um, I did pull out a seventh fish. He was a small little runt. Now this little fella here, he'd never grown as fast as the other fish in the system. Uh, we found he had a very bad defect on the mouth and he couldn't open it very far. So this little fella had just been taking the small little pellets as, that he could as they um, came through to him, just the cracked pellets and bits and pieces like that. Other than um, the defective jaw, he looked fine. His scales looked fine, his fins looked fine. Um, when he was cleaned to be turned into fish cakes, um, he looked fine. So there was no real problems there. I think he was, yeah, just couldn't get enough food to put on a lot of size. So those fish were all turned into some fish cakes. I was following one of Bianca's recipes, but I left my finger on the food processor button a little bit too long and it turned out a bit pasty. Still tasted fine though. I threw in some turmeric and other spices and bits and pieces we harvested from the yard and we ended up with some nice little golden fish cakes. Went down a treat next to a homegrown salad. Um, what else? Uh, the water in the system, yeah, we pretty much well left the tank online after we depopulated it and the main reason being because we're in winter down here, wanted to leave as much water in the system as we could uh, because the more water you have, the harder it is to shift the temperature and I figured if I took out a thousand litres from the system, um, yeah, during winter the temperature would drop a lot more in the system so I left it in there for a while. On the weekend though, Bianca and I decided it was time to pull it out. We gave it a bit of a scrub with the broom, um, hosed it all out, and it's sitting off to one side in the backyard there, ready to go over to my parents' place, where it will become the sump tank for their system. Um, what else has been going on? Oh, yeah, um, had someone come around to pick up some bits and pieces the other day, and while they were here, I was showing off the fish farm, and I noticed we had a floater, well, it was actually a sinker, a nice large fish up in the back of this tank here. Um, that was before the other tank was taken out, by the way. Um, what had happened is I think the water temperature had dropped a little bit too far. Uh, we had it around 10 degrees and slightly lower, that's 50 Fahrenheit, I think, and slightly lower um, in the system. And I think this one fish uh, just couldn't hack the cold temperature and killed over. These jade perch are uh, semi-tropical fish. They come from a warmer region here in Queensland, so they don't really like cold temperatures. Um, a lot of the reference material says anything under 10 and you can expect to lose fish, which basically happened. Um, Health-wise, he looked fine though. Um, no, no blemishes on him, no sign of infection. The fins look fine. Um, yeah, he just up and died. The only other thing I can think that might have happened is when these guys get spooked, they really do hit the wall. And sometimes I have been told that they can kill themselves that way, knock themselves out and drown. So um, that's the only explanation I have for that. So. Um, I think that's pretty much all it, bringing you all up to date on that. Um, I will actually, I'll bring you up and give you a bit of a look at the system. Um, she's running pretty sweet, pretty clean. I'll just run through how it's all plumbed up now, give you a bit of a look-see, and then we'll have a bit of a look at the fish at the end. So this is how the system looks at the moment. We've taken the other tank out there, and I've just got my little table and chair there. Just have my morning coffee. And yeah, it's pretty much all now, just the fish tank, radial flow filter, the drum at the front there, just that one there. Then we have a um, bioreactor, and then right at the back we have the sump tank. So the taking it out of the system, it was, you know, pretty easy. It only took me about five minutes to um, disconnect the pump and the pipe work and turn the pump back on again before I took out the IBC. I did just plug up the little uni seal running into the radial flow filter from the fish tank. Um, that's where the solids lifting outlet came into the radial flow. I just pushed a bit of pipe with a um, end cap on the end through the uni seal and it's pretty much all stopped up that hole. Other than that I did have to redirect the water flow but I'll show you that in a minute. So just in the radial flow filter, I mean there's not really a lot to see down in there. It's pretty clean, with only 19 fish in the system, and being winter and them not being on full rations, yeah, it's not really getting a lot of solids in there at the moment. Um, the thermometer is reading roughly around about 20 degrees, just under 20 degrees Celsius, which is just below 70 Fahrenheit, I think. 
uh, 69. So yeah, I'm pretty stoked with the way it's going. Not collecting a lot of solids. Um, the fish are on half rations at the moment, so they're only getting around about 45 grams worth of feed a day. Um, that's split up over two feeds, one in the morning and one at night. And at times I'm still finding pellets floating around. So even at 20 degrees, for some reason, the fish in this system don't feed as well as the fish in the aquaponics. So, but they're all still looking healthy, which you'll see in a little while. So I'm not too worried about any issues there. Uh, just quickly, water chemistry, um, ammonia around about 0.5 parts per million. Nitrite um, is just trace. I can't hardly see it in there. Nitrate, funnily enough, is around about 10 parts per million. So there isn't a lot of build-up of the nitrate in the system. I have had a lot of people concerned about the nitrate level of the fish in the system, um, but obviously either um, the fish aren't generating enough um, waste to produce high levels of nitrate at the moment, or it is off-gassing somewhere. So the only place I think it could be off-gassing is in the next filter, which is the supposedly moving bed bio filter, but it's more just a static pack filter at the moment. Um, I'll just take the lid off. So what we have down in here is just a couple of um, pipes with slits in them. Just helps to um, spread out the water a little bit more. Helps aerate it a little bit. Uh, down in here we have a coarse filter matting, then a not so coarse filter matting, and then we have one of these blue fibrous ones. It's more like a woven matting. Um, and I've got them just sitting on top of um, around about 95 litres of PEO3 biomedia, or it's a coldness style. There is some of it above the waterline, the majority by far is below the waterline, and that's pretty much all where all the, um, the biological activity is happening, where the bacteria are living, that and also this filter matting. Um, what I think has happened though is some of the fine solids that do go through here would be accumulating on the bottom of this barrel here and there may be some off-gassing happening there. I mean, I'm no expert, I don't know for sure. But yeah, there definitely isn't a lot of nitrate in the system whatsoever. Not enough to be worried about anyway. So, a bit hard for you to see, but you get a real brown um, scunge to this bottom mat in particular, and that's all the really fine solids. And as a result, I have pretty much all crystal clear water in the um, fish tank. There are a couple of larger solids that aren't being taken out by the solids lifting outlet, um, but that's just because it's a square tank and I can't get the water to um, circulate correctly. Um, in the large aquaponic tanks I have no problems with that whatsoever because yeah it's a spiral motion and all the solids get dragged to the pipe. So I'll just put this guy back together and I'll show you how the pumps arrange now. So we have the pump down there, it's a little 10,000 litre an hour jobby. Uh, it just pretty much will flow straight up here, straight up to the fish tank. This line here was feeding a venturi that was in the base of the bioreactor or moving bed biofilter. Um, I just don't have it running at the moment. Um, I don't really see any point in it. I'm not actually happy with the way it was set up. I think in the future what I would do, I'd have an air ring at the base. Um, so if any solids did tend to fall down, um, that would just keep them in place so they could be taken out to a different filtration unit and be removed from the system. Uh, because I have noticed that a, a lot of gunk, a lot of muck does build up on the base of these units when the vent is lifted off a couple of inches or six to eight inches off the base so 15 to 20 centimeters so um, yeah definitely not running the Venturi anymore I pretty much will don't need it I don't think there's enough oxygen in the water um, through the Venturi and the falling motion in the drum there to you know not really need any extra O2 in there just for the fish load in there at the moment though that is I mean if this was fully stocked with um, the 90 fish again that would be running flat out to help oxygenate the water up the top here I've just turned my little two-piece feeder around so I could hook up my UV filter. The UV filter is pretty much well just used for um, knocking off any algae in the system. It doesn't kill bacteria. I mean, you saw from the, the chemistry test before, the process is still happening. I've had people say that UV filters kill bacteria in the system. They don't. Um, in this one, we use it just for algae, no other purpose. Um, over here, I've just capped off this little end piece here. And yeah, that's pretty much all how the unit's running at the moment. And oh, just on the other side in there, we have the little homemade Venturi. Um, nothing special, just a, a bit of PVC pipe with a bit of a hose thrown down him and he seems to be working fine. So before we have a look in the sum tank, I thought I'd just show you this. Um, what we have here is bicarb soda or sodium bicarbonate. This stuff here is fantastic at um, keeping your pH balanced in the aquaculture system. Not something I would use in aquaponics because it is sodium based. Uh, too much sodium, you'll have problems with plant growth and all sorts of things. When the system was populated with roughly around about 60 jades, I was adding in about that. Um, what's that about? 
two tablespoons worth every two or three days and that was it very scientific I know folks um, about two tablespoons worth every couple of days and that was keeping my pH between roughly around about um, 6.3 to 6.8 somewhere in there I'll show you how much I'm adding at the moment probably about that every four to five days if that so maybe even once a week um, the fish just aren't feeding that much the bacteria have slowed down um, they're not processing the waste as much so we're not having the um, the, the pH drop as far. Uh, in here at the moment it's nothing too exciting folks just this little cord here is attached to a 500 watt aquarium heater just in the sump tank um, that's pretty much well enough for the cold nights to heat the water up to a, a point where the fish are happy. Um, this float valve was connected to a top-up line and um, that line's since been disconnected since the um, aquaponics was expanded. Just down there we have the inlet from the um, whoops just down there we have the inlet from the uh, bioreactor and just over there the outlet to the pump so it's not very exciting at all oh, just to show you on the barrel here too the way I've got this um, electrical line coming through what I've done is I've notched out I've notched out a section here so that just sits down there so the lid doesn't crimp it or anything like that um, keeps it nice and happy and just up in here see if I can blind you um, I've got uh, one of those little outdoor weather boxes and that's just got the plug connection and I just turn it off um, off and on in my electrical box so there we go uh, pretty easy you know little setup just to heat the system at this size um, not something that's going to keep it at optimal temperature but it is something that will keep the fish happy enough you know so they don't keel over so as you can see the water is pretty clear um, that's all down to those mesh filters or the, the sponge filters. They do a great job at re removing all those solids. You can see a fair few um, little black dots of floating solids in there. That's because the um, fish got um, a little bit spooked when I opened the lid up to give you a better look and they just pushed them around the tank. Um, that's one of the problems with this tank here being square. Um, the solids are accumulating over in that back corner down the base there and they're not being circulated enough to come down the front here to be taken out by this solids lifting outlet. The solids get taken out with the water up through there and then down through this pipe into the radial flow but it's just not happening with this tank so there's no drama with those solids though all I need to do is just get my little vacuum attachment in there a little siphon vacuum and yeah it picks up all those solids and takes them out so I'm pretty happy really with the way that the system's going the fish are looking healthy um, hopefully we'll have them all out of here and harvested within two months so we can um, make better use of this space and turn it into grow beds for the aquaponics so there you go folks, there's a bit of a look at the aquaculture system. Like I said all through the clip, I'm pretty pleased with the way it's going. Uh, mind you, it's been in here for 15 months now and I really can't wait to see the end of it. Um, I really do want to be able to grow some more veggies, like those ones over there, um, in this space here. So hopefully we'll get around to it soon. Um, this was never going to be a permanent fixture for you folks who thought I was, you know, going to keep running the fish farm indefinitely. Uh, it was just a bit of a lark, a bit of a folly, uh, just something to muck around with, get a bit of experience. Um, definitely something um, if we had a larger property I would do again but in a big pond or a dam or something like that not in an IBC or a tank situation leave that for the aquaponics I think um, uh, just quickly I've had a couple of people contact me online wanting me to design systems like this for commercial use um, I'm not going to do it sorry guys I'm a backyard hack I'm no um, aquaculture specialist. Um, this is just stuff I picked up on the way. Um, Mr. Paul Vans helped out a lot through his build a fish farm in a day workshop. Um, that's where I got the rough idea to do this. This isn't based on Paul's, by the way. He's much more professional than me. Um, you know, if you want a commercial system, hit up a commercial designer. They know all the mass balancing equations, flow rate calculations, solids removal, all that sort of stuff. And there's no way I can scale up a 200 litre drum with a bucket in the top for solids filtration and another 200 litre drum, 50 gallon drum full of biomedia for your biofiltration. Um, you really do need to see a professional guys and they will draw you up some schmicko plans. Might cost you an arm and a leg but hey, um, it's much better to do the job properly in the first place rather than, you know, be shoveling out dead fish in four months time. So I'll pretty much will leave that there. Um, yeah, so... This situation here where I'm sitting hopefully will be um, plants soon. Uh, deep water culture for the aquaponics. I'd like to do at least one bed of that along the front here, sort of where I'm sitting now. And beside me here I'd like to do some barrels with some ginger, turmeric and galangal in them. The, the spices we like to use in our cooking. Um, the ginger in the aquaponics has just worked so well this year. Haven't harvested it yet but the plants are looking so healthy. Can't wait to have a crack with a couple of them in a barrel along the back here. Um, 
But other than that, I think that's pretty much all it for this clip. Bit of an update. Um, just quickly, if you like, you know, aquaculture, aquaponics, urban farming, that sort of thing, uh, feel free to subscribe. There'll be a little button up there. Um, you can subscribe, and every time I post a clip on, you know, the chickens, worms, composting, the garden beds, anything like that, you'll get an email in your email account just letting you know we've posted a clip. You can come along and see what we're doing in the small little farm. Um, very small little urban farm, mind you. So, yeah, I'll pretty much will leave it there. Thank you very much for coming along. And as always, if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments section below and I'll get back to you where I can. Other than that, hope everyone's well and happy and have a great one. Cheers, folks.